why didn't you do more to put bin Laden and Al Qaeda out of business when you were president? There's a, a new book out. You may, um, I suspect you've already read, called The Looming Tower, and it talks about the fact that uh, when you pulled troops out of Somalia in 1993, bin Laden said, "I have seen the the frailty and the weakness and the cowardice of U.S. troops." Then there was the bombing of the embassies in Africa and the attack on the coal. Okay, let's just go through. Let, 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 let me, let me, may I just finish the question, yeah. sir? And, and after the attack, the book says that uh, bin Laden separated his, his leaders, spread them around because he expected an attack, and there was no response. I understand that hindsight is always twenty twenty. No, let's talk about it. But the question is, no. why didn't you do okay, more, connect the dots, right. and put them out of business? All right, let's talk about it. I will answer all those things on the merits, but first I want to talk about the context in which this arises. I'm being asked this on the Fox network. ABC just had a right-wing conservative running uh, their little pathway to 9-11, falsely claiming it was based on the 9-11 Commission report, with three things asserted against me directly contradicted by the 9-11 Commission report. And I think it's very interesting that all the conservative Republicans who say I didn't do enough claimed that I was too obsessed with bin Laden, all of President Bush's neocons thought I was too obsessed with bin Laden. They had no meetings on bin Laden for nine months after I left office. All the right-wingers who now say I didn't do enough said I did too much. Same people. They were all trying to get me to withdraw from Somalia in 1993 the next day after we were involved in Black Hawk Down, and I refused to do it and stayed six months and had an orderly transfer to the United Nations. Okay, now let's look at all the criticisms. Black Hawk Down, Somalia. There is not a living soul in the world who thought Osama bin Laden had anything to do with Black Hawk Down, or was paying any attention to it, or even knew Al-Qaeda was a going concern in October of 93. I, I, I understand. I, no, I, I don't no, wait, no, wait, no, wait. Don't tell me this. You asked me why did I do more to bin Laden. There was not a living soul. All the people who now criticize me wanted to leave the next day. You brought this up so you get an answer. Uh, but I, you I'm can't perfectly do happy to right. take right. it. Secondly, bin Laden says that but bin Laden may have said bin Laden that. says, ben, but it showed the weakness of the United but States. But it, it, it would have shown the weakness if we'd left right away. But he wasn't involved in that. That's just a bunch of bull. That was about Muhammad Adid a Muslim warlord murdering 22 Pakistani Muslim troops. We were all there on a humanitarian mission. We had no mission, none, to establish a certain kind of Somali government or keep anybody out. He was not a religious fanatic. But, Mr. There was no al-Qaeda. With respect, if I may, without, with, instead of going through 93 and No, 96, no, you ask it. You I, brought it but up. May I, may I ask you, you a general question and then you can answer? Yeah. The 9-11 Commission. You, which you talk about, and this is what they did say, not what ABC pretended they yeah. said. What did they they say? said about you and President Bush, and I quote, the U.S. government took the threat seriously, but not in the sense of mustering anything like the kind of effort that would be gathered to confront an enemy of the first, second, or even third rank. That, first of all, that's not true with us and bin Laden. Well, I'm telling you, that's and, what the 9-11 right, Commission Let's look at here. what Richard Clark said. Do you think Richard Clark has a vigorous attitude about bin Laden? Yes, I do. You I do, don't has, you? He has a, a variety of opinions and loyalties, right. but yes, no, he right, has a vigorous wait, opinion. Yeah, he has a variety of opinions and loyalties now, but let's look at the facts. He worked for Ronald Reagan. He was loyal to him. He worked for George H.W. Bush. He was loyal to him. He worked for me, and he was loyal to me. He worked for President Bush. He was loyal to him. They downgraded him and the terrorist operation. Now, Look what he said. Read his book and read his factual assertions. Not opinions, assertions. He said we took vigorous action after the African embassies. We probably nearly got bin Laden. Well, what, I authorized... No, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. A, a few, no, wait a minute. I cruise no, no. I authorized, I authorized the CIA to, to get groups together to try to kill him. The CIA was run by George Tenet that President Bush gave the Medal of Freedom to. He said he did a good job setting up all these counterterrorism things. The country never had a comprehensive anti-terror operation until I came there. Now, if you want to criticize me for one thing, you can criticize me for this. After the cold, I had battle plans drawn to go into uh, Afghanistan, overthrow the Taliban, and launch a full-scale attack search for bin Laden. But we needed basing rights in Uzbekistan, which we got after 
the CIA and the FBI refused to certify that bin Laden was responsible while I was there. They refused to certify. So that meant I would have had to send a few hundred special forces in and helicopters refueled at night. Even the 9-11 Commission didn't do that. Now, the 9-11 Commission was a political document, too. All I'm asking is, anybody that wants to say I didn't do enough, you read Richard Clark. Do you book. think you did enough, sir? No, because I didn't get him. Right. But at least I tried. That's the difference in me and some, including all the right-wingers that are attacking me now. They ridiculed me for trying. They had eight months to try. They did not try. I tried. So I tried and failed. When I failed, I left a comprehensive anti-terror strategy and the best guy in the country, Dick Clark, who got demoted. So you did Fox's bidding on this show. You did your nice little conservative hit job on me. Well, what I want to know well, wait, is... Wait, 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 no, wait, I'm wait, asking wait, a question. You no, don't no, think that's a legitimate I'm, question? I, no, it was a perfectly legitimate question, but I want to know how many people in the Bush administration you asked this question of? I want to know how many people in the Bush administration you asked, why didn't you do anything about the coal? I want to know how many people you asked, why did you fire Dick Clark? I want to know how many people you we asked, asked, we asked this. It, it, Do you ever watch Fox News Sunday, I sir? I don't believe you asked him that. We asked plenty of questions. You of, didn't ask that, did you? Tell about the truth, the USS Cole? Tell the truth, I, I, With, with Iraq and Afghanistan, that? there's plenty of stuff to ask, Did you sir. ever ask that? You set this meeting up because you're going to get a lot of criticism from your viewers because Rupert Murdoch is supporting my work on climate change. And you came here under false pretenses and said that you'd spend half the time talking uh, about, you said you'd spend half the time talking about what we did out there to raise $7 billion plus in three days from 215 different commitments. And you don't care. I, but President you, Clinton, uh, if you, you look at the questions your, here, you'll see half the questions about that. I didn't think this was going to set you, you launched, off on such a you tear. Launched, it set off on a tear because you didn't formulate it in an honest way and because you people ask me questions, you don't ask the other side. That, and, sir, and Richard that's not Clark, true. that is not true. Richard Clark made it clear in you, his testimony. Would you like to talk about the about the Clinton Global Initiative? No, I want to finish this. Now. All right. Well, it's all up I'm to you, saying sir. is, you 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 falsely accused me of giving aid and comfort to Bin Laden because of what happened in Somalia. No one knew Al Qaeda existed then. And the but very, did they know, no, did wait, they know wait, in 1996 when he declared war in the U.S.? Did they know in 1998 absolutely, absolutely when, when, he, when he bombed the and, two embassies? Did they know in 2000 when he hit the coal? What did I do? I worked hard to try to kill him. I authorized the findings for the CIA to kill him. We contracted with people to kill him. I got closer to killing him than anybody's gotten since. And if I were still president, we'd have more than 20,000 troops there trying to kill him. Now, I've never criticized President Bush, and I don't think this is useful. But you know we do have a government that thinks Afghanistan is only one-seventh as important as Iraq. And you ask me about terror and al-Qaeda with that sort of, sort of dismissive thing, when all you have to do is read Richard Clark's book to look at what we did in a comprehensive, systematic way to try to protect the country against terror. And you got that little smirk on your face. Do you think you're so clever? But I had responsibility for trying to protect this country. I tried and I failed to get Bin Laden. I regret it, but I did try. And I did everything I thought I responsibly could. The entire military was against sending special forces into Afghanistan and refueling by helicopter. And no one thought we could do it otherwise because we could not get the CIA and the FBI to certify that al-Qaeda was responsible while I was president. And so I left office. And yet, I get asked about this all the time. They had three times as much time to deal with it, and nobody ever asked them about it. I think that's strange. Can I ask you about the Clinton Global Initiative? You can. I always intended to, sir. No, you intended, though, to move your bones by doing this first, which is perfectly fine. But I don't mind people asking me. I actually talked to the 9-11 Commission for four hours, Chris, and I told them the mistakes I thought I made. And I urged them to make those mistakes public because I thought none of us had been perfect. But instead of anybody talking about those things, I always get these clever little political deals where they ask me one set of questions and the other guy's another set. And it always comes from one source. And so, and, what, and so, I, I now, really want to ask you about the Clinton Global Initiative. But what's the source? I mean, I, you seem upset, and I'm. I, 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 I am upset because, and, and, and because I can tell you, I I'm asking you this in good faith because it's on people's minds, sir. Well, that's and right. I wasn't, and but I wasn't, there's a and reason I, it's on people's minds. That's the point I'm trying to make. 
There's a reason it's